All right, so that's it. I'm probably going to already get copyright struck down, but whatever. Anyway. Hello there, Criterion and Hair, number 479, Louis Mal's My Dinner with Andre. 1981, 11, 111 minutes, color, blah, 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 blah. So Mal's back. And uh, so this is, this is kind of like, um, this is actually an interesting movie. It's almost like watching Phantom India or Made in USA or one of his documentaries, although it's it's scripted, you know? It's that's that's a trippy trippy way to do a movie. Anyway, um a lot of people seen this movie and a lot of, know it's a lot of people know Wallace Shawn from uh, Princess Bride, a movie which I've never seen. I don't understand how because I just didn't grow up with that kind of stuff. So, it's like this is my first taste of Wallace Shawn like through, you know, that I can think of like all the way through. Um so Interesting movie. It was written by the two stars, Wallace Shawn and Andre Gregory, who play fictionalized versions of themselves. And the movie is, again, an extremely experimental idea. It's just basically what it is. Um, it's just these two friends who haven't seen each other in a while. They sit down. Um, Andre Gregory invites Wallace to dinner at a restaurant, and he takes the uh, while he takes the like taxi and a train down to the restaurant, and they sit there for almost you know all this time and just talk about stuff. Um, the first half is mostly focusing on Andre talking about his you know past and talking about you know um, these telling Wally, Wally all these stories about him before when he was working as a theater director and things like that. Just a lot of just random stuff. So just mostly just him talking for almost an hour straight, you know, with Wally sometimes chiming in here and there. Um, but around after the second half of the film is more or less a discussion between the two of them, focusing more on Wally. Um, he, it, I mean, it, and a lot of it comes just from, you know, just what they're talking about. They start talking about, you know, very, you know, kind of philosophical ideas, concepts, things I really got into. Um, I was, you know, kind of following along, even though it is, you know, if you're not paying attention, it's like, it's kind of very stream of consciousness, even though they wrote it. They wrote it themselves. Mal's just directing. And it's, it's kind of weird to see Mal just, you know, have little, almost little to do personally, in my opinion. You know, I mean, the beginning showing Wally, you know, traveling to the, uh, to the restaurant, you know, felt like one of Louis Miles' documentaries, and I, I kind of was getting into it that, but then the rest of it is just kind of Mal capturing close-ups of the two of them. Um, the waiter, you know, intermittently, very rarely intervenes to, you know, serve the food, and eventually, like toward the end, they ask, he asks for dessert, and so they they get a little something, and they're just they just talk about you know existentialism and all kinds of just trippy subjects about you know the future and death and you know is there more to life than what they already have, and Wally you know seems to be on the side of you know trying not to think about life a whole lot. Whereas Andre is really trying to expand himself, you know. And it's just kind of, that's basically it. It's just these two guys talking, you know. Some people think it's, you know, some people might, you know, think it's boring. Um, in, I think if it were handled by any other director, it might be. But for some reason, Mal makes it work. Because it's Mal's project, you kind of look at the movies that did work with him. And especially if you've seen the documentaries of Louis Mal, like Phantom India and Calcutta, and um, even like you know, Human Trop Human, um, and maybe even some of his, you know, his fictional films like La Combe Lucienne and um, uh, movies like that, you get a sense that this movie isn't non-Mal. This do this does not feel. This is this is not not feel like a Louis Mal film. It's different, 
it's very, very different from what everything he's done. But it it contributes. There's something in it that says, hey, this is Louis Malthus. It was written by the two stars, but it's a Malthus. And it's funny because, yeah, because they – he wasn't originally, I guess, the original director. I forget. They say in the supplements who they had had, and I guess Louis Mal um, was told about the film from a friend. They had mutual friends, and he was on the phone in tears. He really wanted to be a part of this. And so you know, they let him on, and, you know, they first didn't believe it was him because, you know, because of his status as a director. They didn't think, oh, come on, they're pulling his leg. You know, this can't be Louis Mal. But sure enough, it was, and they got together, made the film, and there you are. Um, but yeah, it's just, again, just one long-ass conversation that ends with them. There's no real, you know, solution to the conflict they had, or, like, any discussion, any viewpoints. They don't really see, they agree on some things, and they disagree on some things, and in the end, they kind of just... They are just too, they may not even be that different. They may have not even changed. But what has changed is the restaurant. But at the end of the film, you know, they've, they're the last people to leave. They've been sitting there talking for, which I kind of knew, I kind of saw that coming. That the waiter would either end up interrupting or something like that. But no, they just look up and realize that the waiters are, you know, fixing the tables and all that. And so Mal, um, Andre pays for the, the dinner um, Wally takes a taxi back to his house and all that, and, or his apartment, and that's it. Um, yeah, there aren't really any other actors except for the waiter, the the waiter and the, um, the bartender. Now, there's a hat check girl, but I don't think, you know, they don't credit her in the film. So, it's a very, very minimalist thing. And it, and they talked about possibly making it a play, but they said they, this needed to be filmed. And, you know, and honestly, I'm sure people have done productions of this, like play productions of this. Um, although I'd be very surprised if Gregory or uh, uh, Sean, you know, okayed it. You know, because it feels more like it should be a film. It, like there's, which is funny because you know there's so little of the visual. There's not really nothing visual in this movie you know it's just them just two guys looking at each other you know more or less so there you are and uh yeah a really good movie i i really enjoy this um i was on the fence because i you know i'm not a fan of everything louis miles done but i'm also still very open to what he's done you know because of how many good movies and documentaries I, I look at every film as a will it, will it pass, will it pass kind of thing, you know. Movies like, you know, The Lovers sucked, um, The Fire Within was pretty dumb, you know, Elevator to the Gallows with, uh, with the, with the uh, exception of Miles Davis' score was terrible, and, you know, Murmur of the Heart was a, was a bitch to get through, and, um, you know, so is also La Comme Lucienne was pretty painful. But, you know, then we have all the documentaries and Au revoir les enfants. You know, those are fantastic films, you know. Um, so we have just another good one. Here's another good one. My Dinner with Andre. Um, that's all I have to say about this film. I give it an A. Good stuff. I would highly recommend checking this out. Not for someone who really wants to, you know, I would stay awake for this. You know, if you want to be put to sleep, this might help. If you're tired, don't watch this film. It will put you to sleep because two people talking about things you probably that go over your head, you know, will probably just bore you to death. But I got into it. Um, I got a little lost because it's very, you know, it's easy to get lost in their dialogue and kind of not pay attention to what they're saying. But because of the nature of the film and how it bizarrely worked. I want to see it again. I might even pick this one up at the next sale. Never know. So, um, yeah, dug it. So, My Name with Andre, A, check it out. Uh, DVD, the first disc, the second disc is all the supplement, which is just two, two, um, two pieces. Uh, one of them is a new interview with uh, Noah Baumbach interviewing um, Wallace Shawn and Andre Gregory on two separate occasions. Um, just 
both get about a half hour piece. And uh, I'm not a fan of Bombach, but you know, it's interesting to see the two guys still talking because they're still alive. They're still alive today. I think uh, Andre Gregory's in his 80s, and Wallace Shawn's like 75, 70. I think he's yeah, 75. I think uh, returned 75 this year. Um, the other film is a episode of the BBC program Arena, which is a long-running documentary, which which was produced around the time after uh, My Dinner with Andre, featuring which features uh, which is called My Dinner with Louis, which features Wallace Shawn interviewing Louis Mal, and they just basically sit down to dinner and talk about a number of uh, Louis Mal's films, such as um, The Lovers, The Fire Within. Um, Phantom India, Murmur of the Heart, La Combe Lucienne, uh, Pretty Baby, and I think that's it. I think those are the ones. And they also play some of, um, of course, they play some of My Dear with Andre as well. Uh, so, yeah, um, again, really interesting. I always love BBC Arena, those BBC episodes, and I love when they, when Criterion get the rights to those. So I would definitely, I'm definitely going to probably pick this one up, at least for the interview, although, you know, considering... Although I will skip the clips from, you know, The Lovers and Murmur of the Heart. because. Uh, but anyway, My Dinner with Andre, A, really interesting stuff, but don't watch this when you're asleep. If, if you're going to fall asleep, because you will, um, if you're tired. Anyway, check it out. So, that's it for today. Oh my god. Wait, before I get to that... Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the interview, the review I did of uh, last year at Mary and Bad. Um, I needed to do, I needed to get that off in my chest, and you know, I, I needed to do that. So I appreciate it, um, you guys, if you guys dug that review. I, I realized it wasn't a, a, uh, a straight parody of the film, but considering that movie makes absolutely no fucking sense whatsoever, I figured the review had to make no sense. So. And I wanted to do a lot more with it, but I just didn't have enough time or resources. So I just, you know, I improvised it on the spot and just said, you know what, fuck it, you know. Because that's what I said in this movie, fuck it, you know. Um, but just to be clear, yes, I did not like that film. I thought it was terrible. I gave it an F, and that still stays. It might be probably the second worst film I've seen in the Criterion Collection this, this, um, this season. Um, the first being definitely in the realm of the senses. Uh, but again, we still got plenty more, and I'm not looking forward to a lot of the next couple we have, including. Oh God. Well, this one, I'm not necessarily looking forward. I'm not not looking forward to it. I'm just because this. Oh God. Jesus Christ. The human condition. Holy hell. You know how long? Nine and a half hours. Oh God. We're gonna have to split this up. I'm already tell you right now. We're gonna have to split this up. This is a. So yeah, four discs. Yeah, so we'll do. So this is gonna be a two-part review. Um, we will do discs one and two tomorrow, and then we'll do disc three, discs three and four, uh, discs three and the supplements on Sunday. That's that's the that's what we're gonna do. Um, I can't, really cannot watch all nine and a half hours after I get off work tomorrow. So that's, that's just, that just cannot happen. Because um, then that, it'll be like one o'clock in the morning, or three o'clock in the morning when I get this done. So we're gonna have to watch this piecewise, you know, piecemeal or whatever you call it, so. There. So anyway, that's, but anyway, that's, we're gonna kick, kick things off tomorrow with my review of The Human Condition, which I'm not necessarily looking forward to because Kobayashi's got, um, interested in him and Tatsuya Nakati's in it. You know, I'm familiar with his work. But we'll get started in this tomorrow. Um, and then Monday. Oh God, Monday. Oh, oh, oh God, 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 no, no. I'm gonna try and do both of these on Monday just so I can get caught up because um, next week I'm not gonna have a lot of time to do reviews. Um, little to none, honestly. Um, Thursday and Friday, Probably even Wednesday, I may not have, have time to do any reviews. Um, so we may not see a review until next Saturday, um, which will be probably uh, Repulsion or Jean Dealman or whatever. Um, they're on their way. Hopefully they'll be here tomorrow. Um, 
But uh, yeah, I'm waiting on those. I'm waiting on you know, that and the uh, Repulsion, Gene Dealman, The Last Days of Disco, and I also put a hold on Nikatsu Noir for the Eclipser, who I heard making an appearance in the the video last. I don't remember making it. It's just a big blur. Yeah, I heard he's in it, but anyway. All right, so that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Uh, oh, gosh. Um, I don't know if I have any malls. I mean, there's nothing nothing not to do. Um, don't, monopolize, don't monopolize the conversation at, a, at dinner. Let your friend talk. Uh, unless your friend just wants to hear you talk for over an hour about your theater career. So be it, you know. He did, well, he did say, oh, I like to ask questions, little questions, you know. So I guess it was his funeral. So anyway, that's it for me. Thank you for watching, and we will see you all tomorrow for the beginning of our review of the human condition. And until then, goodbye. Check, please.